was the purpose of this event? So the, the voluntary partnership agreement um, was or is rather being negotiated with the EU and it's really to allow us to um, foster trade with the European Union. And from that backdrop, we've been involved in the negotiations for a few years now. Um, and so we have, over the years, uh, as we have advanced the discussion, thought it wise to have a discussion and learn from other countries who are ahead of us in, 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 the, in a similar process. And so we, 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 we thought of having a few areas that we could focus on um, and then bring experiences from other countries and share with our stakeholders, but give them a chance also to interact with, 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 with those stakeholders from other countries and what we could learn so that as we move forward in the process, you know, we could, in, in essence, whatever we have learned, we could apply that to our own, to our, our own system that we're developing and hopefully we can, in a sense, get there faster, do it a little more effectively, you know, within the time frames. What were the key takeaways? Takeaways were, um, first of all, that, um, you know, it's critical to have stakeholders um, involved in everything. I think, you know, one of the countries, a few of the countries actually shared very clearly that um, they needed to have stakeholders always involved in the process and kept and, and keep keep them very close because you really want that that ownership because whatever you're developing or designing you know it, it helps if your stakeholders are are involved every step of the way so that at the end you know they, they feel like they have accomplished something rather than just let's say for them the forestry commission just sort of forcing something upon them i think you know it's clear also you know um, because we were focusing on, on technologies as well you know for me also one of the takeaways that technology can play um a very significant role even in, in management of forest tracking tracing timber you know traditionally we have relied on a paper-based sort of system in country but i think it's clear that technology can play a far greater role in how we manage how we you know how we track even how information is used i think because a lot of it is still in paper format and and what we, what these guys have been talking about you could do so much more make more informed decisions and with that information as well. Um, I think also one of the focus was on markets. Um, and clearly there's a market. I think it was clear, however, that, you know, Guyana, um, you know, while we think often that we have a lot of timber and in some, in some regards we do, when you look at the sort of larger market, although you realize that um, maybe the focus should be on, you know, more as we, as we refer to as niche markets. And so we need to think about and, and approach marketing and what we have to sell to the market but be very specific because we may not be able to compete with some of the larger producers out there, but there is a market. We just have to be able to be strategic in how we actually um, get access or greater access to that market that is available. The Voluntary Partnership Agreement, or VPA. Guyana is in what phase of the VPA process? The process itself um, has a couple of phases, one being the negotiation phase, then there is the implementation, and then there is the the ratification or, or, or when that process actually goes goes live in that sense um, and so we have just we've completed in 2018 the negotiation phase and we've just started the implementation in, in one of course COVID has kind of slowed that up a little, a little bit or a lot um, but we've just started implementation where well, what, what we're essentially seeking to do is whatever we this we said in the, in, in the document we would do we now start to build those systems build capacity uh, improve traceability tracking on the ground um, and of course that process itself will last uh, uh, is expected to last a few years um, maybe four years in that sense and then once we get to, once we pass that we get to the licensing itself where we are now issuing the licenses for produce that is going to the, to the EU. Why did Guyana enter into a VPA with the EU? When you look at again um, the EU as a market there is there is significant potential and so while the while what is currently being sold on that market is is fairly small because you know there is still potential I think that, that potential is something that we are we've recognized and recognize the need to be able to have systems in place to tap into that market but I think also it, it's not just it, it is so, so the market is just one aspect of why are we doing this I think another very useful aspect is is because we want to develop and improve what we do in country as well. I, I think what the VPA will do or, or what it's bringing for us is not just access to a market, but an improved way of doing business in country, improving systems, improving connectivity, um, building capacity. And, and so it's, it's, it's more than just the market. Um, it's actually working also with the sector itself to improve the product 
that are products that we are actually bringing to the market. So I think there are many facets to, to what we're actually able to gain from the VPA, not just the market in, in, in that sense. How does the VPA help Guyana in its fight against illegal logging? But I think in every system, every country, there, there is some amount of illegal logging. Um, but I, I think we have to understand, again, what the VPA will do is help us to keep a better tab or track of what, you know, where timber is coming from, where it's flowing to. If there are, if there is timber that is coming in and being put into that supply chain, as we call it, um, or being taken out illegally in that sense. Because, as I said, you know, the, the system being developed will allow, I think, so we can track a piece of timber, not, not that we can't at this point, but I think allow us to do, you know, deeper checks in that sense, with a lot more data being available to us and available in a timely manner. So I think when we, so when, when something comes to the market or comes to, to, to be exported, we are a lot more confident of what processes is followed to get to that market. For, for you know, for example, even the sawmills, we are, the, what the system allows us to do is what goes into sawmills, what is coming out. And we can check that on a real time basis. You know, this is what these guys were cutting. These are the quality of the logs. This is the kind of mills they're using. And so if something was added, it gives us a greater chance of knowing. So I think that, that ultimately contributes to you know, that reduction. And so some, if something is illegal, our chance of picking it up is, is, is that much more improved you know, along the chain. How did Guyana determine what products it will export to the EU? There is a list of products. Um, and it's really, it's really on what we are currently producing. So how we approached it is, is to, because we, we have to be very confident of, of what we were already able to track and track easily. And so how we approach this in a sort of a first phase is to, 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 to list the products under the agreement that we felt that we could easily track uh, all the way to the EU. And so, so there is a specific list in that sense, but it's, it's more the common ones, the log, lumber, piles, poles, posts, that sort of thing. So those are currently listed. We haven't, for example, listed things like furniture, which um, is a little more difficult to track. Not impossible, but it's a little more challenging. But again, we thought that um, and felt that because again, our larger exports were in some of those other products, logs and the lumber and so on, that maybe we should add a force go. And then when we, when we review, we can review with an intent to add. So so they, 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 you know, it's not a, we sign it now, we agree on the products and we can't review. When we review, let's say five years, 10 years, we can then, if we feel at that time we can reliably trace or track furniture, we can then add it to the agreement as well and go and go from there. Can Guyana meet the EU market demand for various wood species? A number of other species that we are not focusing on, and that in fact needs to be addressed. I mean, we've, we've done some work in it in the past, but I think it's good that it's come up again in such a strong way from, and hearing not from the gap from, from Guyanese, but from those external that, hey, listen, you guys have a lot of good species, but work needs to be done with them and, and so there is so the market itself what by your your traditional products is the green heart and the purple heart you have a lot more that you could bring to the market but you just need to market it better um, and you can bring a very quality product uh, to that market so so it's not necessarily specific in traditionally yes the green heart purple heart but it's a lot wider that we can go and still be able to, to get a lot of benefits you know as a, as a country what is next for Guyana you know, for us, it's really to what do we do with the information now that we have gathered, we have learned, um, you know, from this event. But what what we don't want to do, and I'm I'm glad that this is happening. So even as we share, you know, put the reports together, you know, how do we sort of take those next steps? What do we do with the information we've got? How do we practically take that information and start making in those little changes, even under the VPA, within that sort of broader umbrella of the VPA, because we have to bear those things in mind as we've learned them. Um, so that at the end of it, we have a, you know, we have a, a, a you know, a, a process and an outcome that I think is is favorable favorable to all. To learn more about the markets, technologies, and communities, lessons and experiences for the forest and wood products sector in Guyana virtual event, visit www.guyanaflegevent2020.com. You can also follow the Guyana EU FLEC VPA journey and learn more by visiting www.forestry.gov.gy and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter.